Hey, what's up? Leroy here. In this episode of Painting Masters, we'll look at work by Michael Soloviev. He's a Russian watercolor painter, currently living in Canada, has been living there for the last decade or so. And um, he's a very highly renowned uh, painter. His work is held in multiple collections. He also represented Canada in um, several large art festivals, and he's also a teacher there. He does a lot of things, and I think his style is really distinct, but in a very subtle way. So you can't really point to what makes it his, but there's something about it that I can now really instantly recognize. And I couldn't find a lot of information about him online, but what I can say is that he does have a YouTube channel where you can actually see uh, several processes. So I highly recommend you check that out. With that being said, let's go and look at some of his paintings. So let's get to it. And I'm starting with my favorite painting of the bunch, uh, probably one of my two or three top favorite ones. And I don't know what it is about his style, but it has this distinct look to it. And a lot of things that are foreign for me and new for me that you don't see many artists do and other things that you see many artists do, he doesn't do. So uh, I don't know, just the sense of light on the people at the front, especially, that's something that really uh, was apparent to me as soon as I first saw this painting. And one thing I love about it, and obviously we can talk about the depth. This is obviously Rome, I think. This is the Colosseum. 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 How do you pronounce it? I'm not sure. Colosseum, I think, um, in Rome. And a uh, bunch of tourists, probably. And uh, you can see how he's not in a hurry to simplify the people. Uh, they are simplified to a degree, of course, but you can tell quite a lot of details when you're looking at every one of them pretty much so nothing like you know the uh, um the people and it's against the light too which is pretty amazing so you see usually people get much darker against the light people go with, with very dark grays i do that very often but here no he goes the other way around and he shows the colors in their full saturation which i love now the people are a bit more saturated so the background's a little you know more muted uh, notice all of these effects in the trees um but overall i think if we're, we're going to be serious for a moment here, what really makes this look good is the, the overall build of the painting. Um, there's a very interesting composition overall where you don't see much of the sky, which has probably been left white, honestly. I don't think he put any glaze on it. Uh, most of the, the area of the painting, the, the, the street takes that. So you can see all the bottom light area there and uh, there isn't an awful lot of very dark values here there isn't a large shape of dark value um, there are large shapes of mid value uh, which I love because look at the transparency of that beautiful blue shadow how easily would I have gone and done it very very dark uh, and perhaps lost some sense of the light so sometimes when you don't hurry too much to darken the the, the the dark shadows, when you kind of stretch the mid value, it can really help because you'll see more of the color. Uh, so uh, you really see the shadow is blue, which is really, really nice. And a lot of negative painting around this kind of thing. I don't think that's masking fluid, but it, I mean, it's really, really good. So I don't know, I love this one. Uh, I'm sometimes not really good with words, but if you just zoom in on different sections of it, you, I don't know, I, I don't think you can not love it. Uh, another thing here, notice the people in the background. That's a very interesting technique. It looks like he, for example, this arm, he actually lifted it. He just put the paint and then <laughs> lifted it back. Uh, that's how it, at least it looks for me. Some other areas that seem in which it seems like he made the shape by lifting. Uh, which I think is very cool. So very different from a lot of the, the same kind of scenes that you see by other artists, which I love. Look at the cars too. I mean, that's really nice. Not a lot of super dark areas, just a bunch of uh, mid-value shapes uh, that look great. Here's another one that I really loved for some reason. Um, I, I'm not sure what it is about it, but I will say this. The first thing that pops to my mind when I look at this is it's not even the, the, the colors or the sky or the, the simplification, it's the angle. This is a, an extreme low angle because what happens is the horizon line is somewhere down below. I don't know where it is. It may be um, even outside the frame. And what happens is what cuts the horizon line is his legs. So we're really down low and it looks like, I don't know, that's probably a cane, but originally I thought he may be playing golf and we see things from the grass point of view. That's what, I don't know, like a dog would see this scene like, or even an ant. It's really a low angle and it's not a very common thing. You don't see 
At least I don't see a lot of paintings that look like that. Now, if we set that aside for a moment, the unique composition and the interest, you, you ask yourself, who is this person? Because you see the back, you don't know anything about him. Um, I assume it's a him. Um, who is this? Where, like, what's going on? What's the situation? Where is he headed? Um, and also the the day. It's a very um, gloomy kind of classic British sky. I would say, obviously, the Big Ben here. I think. Um, I mean, that's a that's a, a, a pretty <laughs> surefire guess. And if you look at all these small white patches of dry brush or you know seeing some of the paper's texture and then how it con contrasts obviously with the very smooth edges here a lot of flow a lot of very interesting movement in the sky uh, i think he may have lifted some of these with a tissue and by the way you can see some of his work on youtube i will show you a painting near the end that you can actually see the process on youtube which is really cool um and yeah this is it just i love this one it's a very unique composition very unique lower angle um, here's another cool one. This is more typical of what you'd see of, of some other artists in that niche. Um, the very dry look uh, reminds me a bit of Chen Chung Wei's work uh, with all of these dry brush marks. That's a common thing or common theme for him. Same with uh, Jasmine Huang, uh, his wife. It's, it's a very common kind of um, look. Um, but I did want to include it because it's just brilliant. I, I love it. Uh, here's another one. And you know, I love these quick half a la prima works um, that, that look like they were done. I believe that's from a demo he did. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where, somewhere in Montreal. Um, but you can tell it was just laid there in one go. And this reminds me a bit of um, Udes's work that I also reviewed in a past episode. But I think with him, it's less about the splashes and it's less about glazes. He does it in a more, in a, in a shorter and quicker approach, less glazing, I think. But in any case, let's move on to the next painting. And sorry about the scenery change. My iPhone's an idiot. Sometimes it just stops filming, ran out of space. And no matter what I do, it doesn't clear up. <laughs> but in any case, next one. Uh, this I wanted to include because it's such a unique um, scene in a way. You don't see a lot of these, you know, interior from the inside to the outside of the window with that kind of level of detail. And I think nice plays um, on the warmth that's inside and then some coolness on the outside, focusing on these, um, you know, I don't know what it is, lamps or of some sorts. That's just a really unique scene I wanted to include. And I think it does showcase his perhaps different approach uh, from the, the, the norm of at least what I see. So I wanted to really show that. Here's another beautiful one. I love this. These, uh, again, urban scenes, my favorite probably. And again, another, he loves not showing a lot of the sky and really letting the, the, <laughs> the street itself come to focus. Now, another thing I notice he does consistently is leave this beautiful white gap uh, above the subject that's more in the foreground. And it could be two things. It could be nice means of separating the washes. But I think on the other hand, it's also a great way of um, um, just making sure that the foreground pops. And it's not too exaggerated, so it doesn't look like uh, that big of a stylization necessarily. But it just I think it really looks... Uh, good and <laughs> look at this kid. It's so clear that like you can tell the from the body language Maybe she's or he I don't know. It looks like she are curious by the horse or whatever I don't know. It's just a really really nice kind of thing now look at his leg uh, His leg is sent forward the edges have a bit of warmth in it But the center is more cool uh, and that also gives the feeling that light comes from the front and shines and casts this kind of a shadow So I don't know a lot of clever things done about this one. Uh, here's another really interesting one the color combination um, and not something you'd see very often as a subject and as an approach to the subject you know uh, this really stri strikes me as a um, very unique painting for some reason I don't know uh, I absolutely love the reflections I love the treatment of the water the simplicity of the ocean here really works uh, well and it's it's a very good I think painting in, in that it really dictates our attention he says the focus is here and there's nothing really here. It's just emptiness, maybe even too empty. You know, I'm missing something here. But that's, I guess, um, probably a part of what he meant to express with this one. Uh, and this is one of the last ones I'm going to show you. What's cool about this one is there is a demo of this on YouTube. So if you want to see how we painted this from start to finish, there's a really good video showing that off. I will link it down below as always. 
Um, so really cool. And the magic is in the simplicity here. Once again, the background is very simple. He is able to express what's in the background, foliage, um, you know, some um, bushes and, and stuff like that, leaves, just by the contour of the um, of the wash. And uh, that's a really neat way of showing it. Nothing is in excess. Again, even this cast shadow by the bikes, I don't know what you'd call this, the thing that it leans on is just just a swipe a line and it looks so good. I don't know, I love this. And the classic, you know, orange and, and blue contrast for the warm and cool place, a very common uh, use of color. And here I wanted to wrap up with this one. I actually wondered if I want to put this one first or last and the one it was first last, uh, but I decided to leave it for last because just personally, for me, on a selfish level, I love cars, I love cityscapes, and this really shows all of these elements, and especially this one. I really, really uh, love the car here on the right. And you see all of these, again, the, the white gaps up top, which, again, could be a really good mean of um, negative painting around uh, different shapes and making sure you don't um, make a big mess out of it. I think that's a really... Uh, good way of doing that and achieving that. So a nice, uh, it shows that it doesn't have to feel like a cutout if you do that, which is something really good, really important, because a lot of people are scared of doing that kind of a thing. And by the way, I, I think it's pretty obvious the street goes down in a slope, which is something I want to talk about in a future video. So you see, I don't think this carriage is much taller than uh, an actual car, but because of the angle of the street, uh, going down, this car looks to be, appears to be shorter. Uh, so that's a common thing to uh, happen. This person seems taller than this car, so it's probably going downhill. That's a very common thing in that kind of a perspective. So in any case, I hope you enjoyed this one uh, and seeing uh, this um, just really good artist's work. Sorry about the weird scenery change that annoyed me a lot. I had to reshoot again and again. And it's, I hate when that happens. It cuts my thought flow. But in any case, we got through it. Thank you so much. And now let's wrap it up again face to face. So this is it for this one. I hope you enjoyed seeing his beautiful works. Um, I didn't work too hard to find a lot of them because I wanted it to be punchy and, you know, synced, but also show his, what I believe to be his best work, but also the work that is the most unique unique to his because I've seen some of his other paintings that couldn't be mistaken for other artists but the scenes themselves the subjects are a little more common like uh, cityscapes against the light a very common kind of uh, a subject where the city itself is the and I do that a lot of times uh, is the subject but rather I wanted to show some of his more more subtle works of focusing on a single figure or you know, that person and the bicycle. It's just more interesting, I find. But in any case, I hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe because I have tons of previous episodes if you haven't watched them. And I'm also publishing new ones on a regular basis, just helping you find artists that you may have not heard of that I think you like. Uh, and yeah, this is it. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you again in the next episode and in the next video.